Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. A few weeks after we landed on the moon in 1969, presidential advisor Daniel Moynihan turned his attention to a different celestial body. He wrote a letter to John Ehrlichman of Watergate fame. In his letter, he warned of 7 degrees warming by the year 2000 and 10 feet of sea level rise. Goodbye, New York. Goodbye, Washington. But unfortunately, 20 years after his deadline, Washington is still there. In the following year, the United States and Soviet Union were worried about a different problem. The United States and the Soviet Union are mounting large-scale investigations to determine why the Arctic climate is becoming more frigid, why parts of the Arctic sea ice have recently become ominously thicker, and whether the extent of that ice cover contributes to the onset of ice ages. Climate experts wanted to spread coal dust over the Arctic ice pack in order to melt it and save us from global cooling. And the following year, NASA's leading climate expert predicted a new ice age in as little as 50 or 60 years. If he's correct, we're going to have a new ice age sometime in the next few weeks. And a year later, in 1972, 42 top American and European investigators wrote a letter to President Nixon giving some different advice from Moynihan. Moynihan said that the world was going to burn up and drown, but these 42 top investigators said we were all going to freeze. Now let's take a look at what's happened over the past 50 years according to climate propagandist Climate Central. They say that forest fires in the United States have been skyrocketing since the 1970s. According to Climate Central, the 8.6 million acres which burned in the U.S. in the year 2012 tied the record for the most acres ever burned by wildfires. Let's remember that number, 8.6 million acres, which they said was a record. And they used this graph showing burn acreage going up on a hockey stick since 1970. But I wonder why they started their graph in 1970. We have data from long before that. Here's a graph from the United States Forest Service showing that during the 1930s, some years had more than 50 million acres burned. But Climate Central said that 8.6 million acres is a record even though it's less than one-fifth of what burned in 1930 and 1931. What Climate Central did is they hid all the data before 1970. They picked the lowest point in the graph to start their trends. You can see that there is somewhat of an upwards trend since 1970, but they hid all of the much higher burn acreage prior to 1970. The New York Times reported in 1938 that during 1937, almost 22 million acres burned. That's more than double than what Climate Central reported as the record from 2012. And the New York Times reported that the burn acreage from 1936 was almost double the 22 million acres from 1937. We can see that in the Forest Service data which Climate Central is hiding. This is 1937 and this is 1936. Over 40 million acres burned. Remember that Climate Central said 8.6 million way down here is a record. The story of deception by Climate Central is pretty bad, but the story actually gets much worse. This document was present on the National Interagency Fire Center website for 20 years until sometime after Joe Biden was inaugurated. The document was prepared by all of the key government agencies and it said, In the conterminous United States during the pre-industrial period from 1500 to 1800, an average of 145 million acres burned annually. So when carbon dioxide levels were below 300 parts per million, 15 times as much burn acreage occurred every year in the United States than what Climate Central claimed to be a record from 2012. The scale of the fraud which Climate Central and the Biden administration are committing is simply mind-boggling. But believe it or not, this story actually gets worse. According to the National Park Service, 85% of wildland fires in the United States are caused by humans. I'm pretty sure that doesn't have anything to do with carbon dioxide or climate. The bottom line has nothing to do with climate, it's about taking governance away from the people. As I discussed in my previous video, Barack Obama used one technique. He lied about what his intentions were. He made voters powerless by signing executive orders to push an agenda which wasn't what they voted for him to do. Another approach for taking away the power of the voters is the use of fake experts like Climate Central. The narrative becomes, you lack the education and expertise to determine your own fate. You have to let the government decide for you. This is what Eisenhower warned about in his farewell speech 60 years ago. The danger of a scientific and technological elite seizing control of public policy. 
But sometimes the Obama approach and the use of fake experts approach fail. And then they invoke the ultimate way to take power away from the voters. This is what happened last November. They had a brain-dead candidate, so they simply rigged the voting methodology. And then they bragged about how their well-funded cabal of powerful people saved the election for Joe Biden. This is not government of the people. They're quite openly telling us that it's a government of a well-funded cabal. Before I finish up, let's circle back around to 1969 where the video started. Daniel Moynihan was promoting climate junk science saying that New York and Washington were going to drown by the year 2000. But the people with the right stuff who actually took us to the moon have a totally different opinion. They want the junk climate science which has been used to seize control of public policy brought to an end. Toto's been barking for 14 years that climate change alarmism has nothing to do with climate and nothing to do with science. You can visit Toto, Kyrie, and Caesar on the web at realclimatescience.com.